Namaste and very good morning. We are at uh, 20th session of the South Asian Online Literary Conference on behalf of Sahitya Academy and the Foundation of Sark Writers and Literature for SWAL. I heartily welcome all the distinguished poets from India, Bangladesh, and Nepal uh, to this session. The session is meant for poetry recitations and uh, it is now uh, commenced and uh, will last until 10 past 11. All the dignitaries will recite one or two of their poems in this session. I welcome all of them yet again and uh, welcome also hearty welcome to Ajitma. She is with us and all through will be with us uh, in this session. Uh, at the outset, with the approval of uh, Ajitma and uh, Sri Suman Pokhrelji, the distinguished poet from Nepal, who chairs this session, I invite uh, the first poet of the session, Vihanga Pereraji from Sri Lanka. Vihanga ji. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, nice to be a part of this uh, forum. I greatly appreciate the invite, and uh, I think this is the best way to spend. Uh, uh, this, this is one of the best ways to spend uh, a weekend uh, with fellow poets reciting poetry. Uh, so, uh, Vihang Upera, I have been uh, writing poetry for a while. I'm a published poet of uh, quite a few collections in my home country, that is uh, Sri Lanka. Um, in addition to poetry, I also uh, engage in uh, the genres of short story, fiction, and biography. Actually, it's a challenge to uh, pick a poem to read in a kind of a multicultural, uh, multi-geopolitical forum like this. And I had to really go through my, uh, uh, my, my, uh, uh, my collections to think of one single poem to share in this seven minute uh, little time, time gap, this window I have been provided. Uh. And in the end, uh, I decided to read, read a poem, which is uh, unpublished. Uh, this is uh, in one of the manuscripts I hope to publish, uh, uh, hopefully next year. Next year, hopefully will be a good year for poetry. Um, and this is a poem uh, that I have titled, uh, a poem with my friend and Annie Jordan in it, A Walk to the River Bend. It's a slightly uh, long title. Now, I don't know about uh, you people, but I am someone uh, who dreams a lot when I'm asleep, of course. But I'm also one person who doesn't remember dreams uh, when, I, when I wake up from those dreams. Uh, except, of course, when I dream of my father. Uh, dreams of my father is very vivid. My father is dead. But other than that, usually dreams kind of elude me when I wake up. Uh, but not all the time there are exceptions. And this is one such dream which actually uh, kind of stayed with me and made itself a premise for a poem, which I composed uh, some time ago. Uh, now in the dream, it's something like this. There, there, there are a few of us gathered, like this poetry gathering today. There are a few of us gathered. And uh, we're having a good time. And suddenly... Uh, a news arrives that, you know, one of my friends are going to come and join us. And this friend is uh, traveling, uh, uh, traveling overseas in a pirate ship. So this is happening in the dream, right? So he's coming in a pirate ship and I'm supposed to go and receive him in a nearby uh, dock where he's going to disembark. Now in this dream, there is uh, Annie Jordan. So Annie, if you meet Annie one day, and he's this very interesting person who never, never shows emotions too much, uh, but in very subtle ways. Uh, she's one of those people who very subtly lets you understand that, you know, uh, her feelings. So Annie's there talking to others. Th this is all in the dream, okay? So, and then Annie says something like, you know, um, okay, uh, uh, maybe uh, I will join you for the walk up to the dockyard. And inside the dream, I already understand that this is Annie's way of saying that she cares for me, not letting me go alone to meet these pirates and to receive my friend. So a few years later, I actually 
wrote this very harmless poem based on this the, the memory of this dream uh, which i thought i will uh, share because it's a it's a good enough poem to kick start a session like this a very harmless personal poem so um, uh, the poem is titled uh, uh, a poem with my friend and any jordan in it a walk to the river bend in my more recent dreams you're happy and content and as the dream evolves and lives you smile and share your banter give opinion contradict views in one such dream you join me as i set out to welcome a friend who had bought a passage home from overseas on a pirate ship soon to touch land by the river's bend you assured all who were worried that the friend traveled with plunderers at sea laughing at that choice but saying that that kind of trip was normal then you said to me perhaps uh, perhaps you should not go alone maybe i can join you at least for the walk and the last i remember of that dream was the corrugated ship coming to sight at the corner with my friend on deck ready to disembark your words and offer of a walk were just as i would always expect from you you who in small measures dispense unless the warmth of your love will be generally known uh, these dreams are long and vivid in detail for what feels like hours they often carry on usually i like to read my poetry a little bit faster so with your permission i will give it one a second go a little bit faster just for the kind of effect i want to have in my more recent dreams you are happy and content and as the dream evolves and lives you smile and share your banter give opinion contradict views in one such dream you joined me as i set out to welcome a friend who had bought a passage home from overseas on a pirate ship soon to touch land by the river's bend you assured all who were worried that the friend traveled with plunderers at sea laughing at the choice but saying that that kind of trip was normal then you said to me perhaps you should not go alone maybe i can join you at least for the walk and the last i remember of that dream was the corrugated ship coming to sight at a corner with my friend on deck ready to disembark your words and offer of a walk were just as i would always expect from you you who in small measures dispense unless the warmth of your love will be generally known these dreams are long and vivid in detail for what feels like hours they often carry on thank you it was wonderful thank you vihang ji now let's move on to our next dream with uh, shri ammaraj joshi ji one of the distinguished poets from nepal thank you uh, uh, i am ammaraj joshi i am from nepal and uh, i am writing uh, poems and short stories for for quite some time i do have uh, a couple of uh, poetry anthologies and a couple of poetry anthologies which are already published uh the first poetry anthology that i did have was man and river and the next anthology is a big tree uh and then uh the story collections that i do have is uh the first one is a night's drama and another one is the pumpkin prince 
uh, and uh, very soon uh, I pull up my writing uh, uh, to be published. I'm uh, currently uh, leading a university. I'm the vice chancellor of the Far Western University in Nepal, which uh, is near the Indian border in the West. So today I am going to recite uh, a poem entitled Parijat. It's based on uh, a uh, Hindu myth. Uh, it relates the story of Parijat. I have written uh, this poem taking into consideration the feelings of Parijat who really fell in love uh, with Surya but was never able to show her fullest beauty to uh, her love. You know, that's the uh, entire narrative and the agony of Parijat really goes into it. So I recite the form. The title is Parijat. Parijat, the night jasmine in New Nepal, who during the ocean churning triggered a brawl in whose share Kostuba, Saranga, and I fall to gratify passions in the divine hall. Indra, the king of gods, in his supreme guise, chose to plant me on Mount Meru in paradise, where with my flowers and fragrance could I adore Apsara's impassioned body and heaven's golden door. Enamored by my splendor, aroma, and nocturnal vow, forloined me for Satyavama, Krishna, the playful rogue, equally enchanted and smitten, Arjuna, the disciple brave, forced my incarnation for Kunti in a mundane cave. Unaware, I am of my presence as a princess on earth of human form, ambitions divine, and bodily birth. With the speeds high and sights up towards the sky, deeply drawn to the sun, orbiting really high. Earning for glory, glitter and agility so sound, rooted myself to the mundane trap I found. Provoked by the serene, sweet sign, I began to run with a longing for deep love after the glittering sun. Fell deep in love with Surya, the sun god high. Damn he cared my no mortal anguish with a fire. Indifferent to me he was in his celestial course. Beyond the ubal of my love lost heart could force. My father and brothers reminded their love not to charge revealing how mundane and divine worlds are way apart. Only weird encounters, gods and humans can have pure, never ever think their lifelong nuptial ties endure. Why would my heart, aching with love, take a heed? Trust on a state of impossibility in love's intense need. Listen to the sweet prophecies of this near so dear, as if aiming to distance my love with evocation of fear. Disrespecting the father and brother as if this preach, followed the sun doubting them with my love bent to breach, with my blazing orange heart and snow white fragrant look. An affirmation in heart to register my love in the book. Fail I to recall the days and nights spent on the chase Almost near was I to be subjected to derision and rays when ultimately my love, the sun, could understand and see with reciprocity my intense love-laden laden plea and amorous glee. Closer to my dwelling on earth, my love came with force. Aware of my mortal limitations, he had chosen the recourse. Living rooted longer on earth, was so tiresome he rose, uh, he rose sooner to heaven, the spheres of light, light 
he normally chose. Move warmly closer during the, during the summer, my love came. With his bright heart touch, the more amorous I became. Tilting from east to west, longer in love, the essence never became aware of the loss of my physical presence. Noticed the law, loss, did my love, and cared for how I burned. Begged for revival, a prince's parizata, to the country of gods I learned after intervention. Incarnated I am as a symbol of love, a tree with snow white blossoms and blazing foreign heart soul. Ever since in disguise visits me my love every night. Ever since in disguise visits me my love every night, commands on my smiling blossom and fragrance his right. When he appears in the morning on distant celestial heights, I strip up myself of sweet fragrance and lovely lights. Love's a lovely thing. I profoundly trust. Yet it's loss, lo loss. They make everyone rest. Would anyone think of the cost both I and my love have to pay? I have to abandon my beautiful attire as his, at, at his first ray, and he has to bear with my average presence in the day. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Maharaj Joshiji, for that beautiful poem. Our next poet is Dr. Anil Kumar Bodoji, distinguished Indian poet writing in Bodo language, critic and translator as well. Anil Kumarji. Thank you. Thank you, Krishnaji. And good morning. All the poet friends from Asia. Uh, I'm basically a poet, translator, and uh, critic. Uh, I write for my language. My language is a uh, uh, Bodo language, uh, a language uh, from the northeastern part of India, and the language belongs to the Sino Tibetan uh, family. And uh, as a creative writer, I write my poems in my own language. And I have also written some uh, short fiction and also fiction, long fiction. And mostly I write uh, critical essays and reviews uh, in my language. But I also write in my regional language, Assamese. And also, I, uh, I write in English, uh, mostly um, the research papers, articles, and critical reviews. And uh, I take interest in academic writings in folklore, culture, and uh, criticism. So today, <clears throat> uh, I have come with two, two very short poems. Uh, one is on one is on the current uh, epidemic covid 19 epidemic this is the impact as we could see in our region in our place in the first phase this is what a poet felt about this epidemic and when this epidemic came during our festival time, huh? I wrote this poem, springtime festival time. <clears throat> so the poem goes like this. Don't call me a guest. Don't call me a guest this year's Beisago festival. Keep the Aronai and the Maivra rice wine and all the Beisago gift deferred for the next season's Vaisago Festival. I am, I am bedridden, isolated at the city quarantine center. As my ailing father battles with life 
at the ICU at the Medical College Hospital. The invincible virus has infected people one after another. Who knows? Who knows? From where does it come? From the Spanish garden or from the returnees from Marcas? Since yesterday evening, I have seen new faces filling the back end beds of the quarantine center. Who is a positive, who is not? I know not. Only the last evening reports came. One more COVID-19 patient succumbed in a Silong hospital and six more positive cases found and 41 suspect to be. The number goes on in Italy, USA, Spain, and France. Who knows? Who knows, the next turn may be mine. Here comes the screaming sound from the next door. Hence, don't call me a guest this year's Beisagu. The, in, the invisible corona has called me a guest this year's Beisagu. Don't call me a guest this year's Beisagu. Another short poem, very short one. This is a, uh, yeah. What's the name of this rivulet? What's the name of this rivulet? A rivulet flows silently by, down the hill caps to the dotted plains unwinding. What a legend it has to unfold of the hill maiden whose tear drops to fill the cup of sorrow. What's the name of the rivulet? that flows silently by a stream of sorrow, a song of melancholy. Thank you. Namaskar. Thanks a lot, Anil Kumar Bhuruji. Now I humbly invite Sri Parbat Lavati Ji, the poet from Nepal. Hello. <clears throat> uh, hello, everyone. A warm good morning to all, to all the distinguished, distinguished poets. I'm very grateful to Azit Kaur Ma'am and Sahitya Academy for giving me this opportunity to read out my few of my poems. Uh, I prefer to call myself more a student. I recently did my master's in arts from Central Department of English, Tribune University. Now I'm currently, uh, I have been running my own literary web portal called Sabda Sopan. Uh, I also work as a writer in an advertising company and in the free time I read and write. I mostly like to write poems and short stories. So uh, without wasting much of my given time, I would like to read uh, short two of my poems. And the first poem is uh, In the Bus Station with a Brahma Kumari. In the Bus Station with a Brahma Kumari. Sometimes when I be there, sometimes when I be there, I think of you in a light manner. I cannot recall your face, but I remember the stare of your eyes. You were in white something, but I remember the stare of your eyes. You were in white something. You had a long and healthy hair, but unusual. Sometimes when I'm changing the TV channels, sometimes when I when I'm changing my TV channels and arrive on Sanskar channel, I remember the baths you had on your chest of Sister Shivani. I remember the baths you had on your chest of Sister Shivani. What should I call you? What should I call you? Pure and beauty or pure and hapless? Sometimes, when I see someone young in white, 
sometimes when I see someone young in white, I think of you. I think of you. I cannot recall your face, but I can still see the vipassana charged eyes. But I can still see the vipassana charged eyes that looked at me long and softly, almost like the look of a ketki, unpicked, unoffered, and cursed. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, now the second poem is, uh, this is titled, A Layman Looking Over Kathmandu. And uh, I wrote this poem in the uh, beginning of pandemic, uh, when it was locked down in all over Nepal. And when people from Kathmandu, the workers were leaving Kathmandu. So in this poem, I'm trying to encapsul encapsulate uh, the feelings of a, a worker or a layman. So a layman looking over Kathmandu. <clears throat> I would have no pleas to you. I would have no pleas to you if only I had rations to sustain a week or 10 days more. I would have no pleas to your governance if only for a month the landlord had spared me the rent. I would have no pleas to your governance if only for a month the landlord had spared me the rent. My heart wouldn't have stiffened to this. My heart wouldn't have stiffened to this if only for months, two, three, had the creditor trusted me with little loan. For the opulent and having goods, this time has become an opportunity for learning to prepare variety of dishes, to test their culinary skills, the aroma of cheese, mutton, jimbu, the aroma of cheese, mutton, jimbu, keep entering through my window pane. At times like this, at times like this, if my children could act stubborn at their mother, at times like this, if my children could act stubborn to their mother, instead of acting to not care, instead of acting to not care, instead of acting so old soul at so early age. If only the thought, if only the thought, why did I marry this man hadn't come to my wife? If only the thought, why did I marry this man hadn't come to my wife? At times like this, if only my country had kept its arm. At times like this, if only my country had kept its arm on my shoulder and said, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. My heart wouldn't have been a corpse to you. My heart wouldn't have been a corpse to you. I hadn't come to Kathmandu. I hadn't come to Kathmandu carrying the hounds of dreams. A layman I am, an abatement in potatoes, rice was all I had wished for. Ten years I lived in Kathmandu. Ten years I lived in Kathmandu. Forty years I lived in this country. Yet, drifting desert further it is. Tell me, tell me, how should I take it as my own country? How should I take it as my country? Tell me where from, from uh, tell me. Where from should I bring the feeling of pride, where it is only I and my kids to die of hunger, of diarrhea, of common flu, of winter, of desire? For the first time, for the first time from Thancourt, I stare at your city. For the first time from Thancourt, I stare at your city. Someday, if anyone rises up against your dry heart, someday, if anyone rises up against your dry heart, if I'm able, if I'm able, I myself, if not to this son, I myself will hand him the stone. I myself will manage him the fire assets. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Prabhuji, for both of your poems. Now let us invite our next eminent poet from Bangladesh. Sri Bhagyadhan Baruaji. Thank you very much. Shuprabhat, good morning, respected chair and respected participant. 
Greetings from Bangladesh. This is Bhagodan Borua, my home district in Cox's Bazar. I am located the longest cities of the world. I sincerely invite all of you to visit in Bangladesh soon to see the beautiful scenery of cities of Cox's Bazar. Professionally, I am physician specialty in child health. I have six book of poems. I would like to express my gratitude to Shaito Academy and first one to invite me such a prestigious platform and also express my gratitude to Ojit Kaoji ma'am to invite me in this program. Now I am reading my poems. The title of first poems is Mirror Has No Reflections. Faces are changed with the change of mirrors. Life stories starts from the end of the journey. As mass anticipation was there, expectation or their true sensibility or affection, whatever you may call. If the bewitched darkness might be fabricated sadness, then I should tell you my unspoken words were very much cognizable of you. There was into my mirror, the rainbow skyline. There was into my distress, rows of yours. There was into my sensibility to escape the eyes. We are now at face to face, the borderline. Few was directly, there is a margin of ocean. If you step back, the increment of distance only, the revolving sphere seems a domestic pendulum surrounding the central axis or beating all over. If I reflect my full image on the mirror, I have no shadow, no reflection, just diapers the center. The title of my second poem, I am reading in my own language, Bangla, then translated in English. The title of poems, Guerrilla. This poem is dedicated to the freedom fighter of Bangladesh Liberation War, 1971. Guerrilla. Rate Nishongo Pote Amiu Shoronati Hati Joshu Road Dore Pite Shongsare Juta Pichone Kuasha Bera Shabni Ostrobindu Jete Hobi Jai Duke Bada Shopu Beach Mind Follow Kne Kal Bil Nodi Paharia Po Potudu Jabukui Jani Shudu Jete Hobi Cherechi Kore Maya Bereche Bukir Ball Hoi Mukti Noimitu Air Beshiki to Janina. Shimana Banatejara jara poter bichile, Buddha, Kosto, Shitir Kapuni, Jorin Chaktai, Bukur Pare Talgachem Moto Dari Take, Nojone Tandobe, Tani Bikir Shadonai, Batar Moto Pastichai, Bod Jan, Koto to Hetech Grilla Tor, Nodi Jani, Koto Rock to Dues Luke Jol, Orono Jani, Koto John Luke Silo Shito Patode. Ma, Bukuji Pajurita, Chok Jani, Postro Bontara, Ondo Adur in Kalibu, Hoi Mukti, Noi Mukti, Air Bishi Pitsu Janina. Guerrilla. I am also Ituzi in the lonely port of night. I walk through Joshua Road, hanging the only burden on my bed. A foggy wall is at my back, and I speak of hope in front of me. I go as I, I have to go, as seat of dreams in, is hidden inside my heart. There's no milestone, how far I have to go, crossing field, river, canals, and hilly roofs. Fire is my destination, I don't know. I know only that I have to go. I have left the attachment of food. My heart has become stronger, either freedom or death. I know nothing more than that. Who have joined in the position to build up a frontier? Who has stand on the bank of a pond like a palm tree, braving hunger, pain, agony of cold, dust of a stone? Who don't care the remedies? I like to live like them, the person of a meditating tree. I like to live a real life. The road knows how far the guerrillas have walked. The river knows how much blood has washed away in the water. The wood knows how many persons were, were hidden under the whole stone. The heart of mother understands the marks in her ribs. The eye knows the flow of tears, the empty bosom of affection. Either freedom or death, I know nothing.
थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू भाग्यजन जी फॉर बोथ ऑफ यूर पॉइंट वी हैव अनदर एमिनेंट पोएट फ्रॉम बांग्लादेश विद अस एट दिस सेशन श्री मीनार मंसूर साहेब आई हम्बली इनवाइट मीनार मंसूर साहब टू रिसाइट हिस पोएम्स नाउ थैंक यू आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू साहित्य अकादमी एंड मीस अजीत काउर अनरेबल चेयर फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम मीनार मंसूर फ्रॉम बांग्लादेश now working as a director of national book center i started my journey with poems in the late 70s after the brutal killing of our father of the nation bangabandhu sheik mujibur rahman and his family this black event of our history and the cruel genocide of 1971 haunt me thus these events keep coming up in most of my poems and writings today i am going to recite one of my poem written in uh, 1978 after the killing of bangabandhu sheik mujibur rahman uh, the name of the my poem is what shall i say your doubts about my health my being alive will be cleared one day thoughts of consequences of my odd life chanting slogans in demonstration carrying illegal arms the cause that causes you insomnia and anxiety letters wet with tears all will turn normal unknowingly i know your numerous letters a thousand questions will be answered suddenly your hands will throw away all the blooms of waiting all silver burnings busily you will wipe your white eyes the last sign of sleeplessness and then will you find your destination effortlessly charts out your own address without exception and for me which of the ways shall i take where shall i stand living an uncertain life every moment before me an eroding messy society the plotting spider weaves a snare a thousand questing arrows pierce me turn my memories bloody how can i resist these tell me what can i answer if salam and barakat send letters in blood smeared in bluff from the streets of 1952 if they want to know anxiously where have you kept those gold bright alphabets we gave you alphabets printed in our blood tell me what shall i say if a bullet ridden monomia from roaring human sea of 1966 questions angrily i have given you a flag colored fresh with my blood here you have kept that crimson flag of equality tell me how will i answer the him if the freedom fighters of 1971 they are lie on roads all in encompassing send an ultimatum in their dazzling scalp in veil of all our love our freedom doffed with your full warm our constitutions written in our sisters honor and brothers blood we put in your safe hands where is that love where are those 
sacred beliefs? Where have you preserved them? What will be my answer? If the shining masses of 75, not men, women, children, but courage incarnate, come down suddenly at the dead of night from the pretty frames hanging on the wall, knock at our doors or shout out to break the silence of the radio at midnight. We had a dream, horizon stretching, and we had the ever dreaming sorrowful people. Where are those bright horizon reaching dreams? Where are those bright horizon reaching dreams? How are they, our wretched people? What will be my answer then? How would I tell them about this powerlessness, these scenes, the self annihilating games of war we play? Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot, Menar Mansusa, for your poem. <clears throat> now we come to the chair of the session, Sri Suman Pokhrelji, the distinguished poet from Nepal. Sumanji. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank Pasval and Saitya Academy for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I don't want to take more time because next session is going to start very soon. Uh, and I to tell about me, I am a lover of poetry and addict of life. And uh, for my writing, uh, uh, two of the universities in India and two universities in Nepal have um, uh, put my poetry in their syllabus of masters of uh, masters course in uh, literature. Uh, uh, and some of my poems are translated in other, some languages. Uh, if we count, uh, it is about 12 or 13 languages, but not in form of book. Uh, individual poems are, have been uh, published uh, in those countries in different languages. Uh, now, uh, other, um, this is a time, very easy time that we can Google uh, anything and can know uh, very much about what we want to know about. Uh, now, uh, now I would like to recite one of my poem, um, The Verified of Poetry. Uh, it has been translated into Canada and Italian also. And this was originally written in Nepali. Uh, I think it was written in 1999. And it has been translated into other languages uh, later on. Uh, now I would like to recite the poem, uh, Berefet of Poetry. I have two poems in this title, and this is one of them. This moment, my mind is perfect of poetry, yet I want to write nothing but a poem. Out here are books and magazines asleep, carrying the entire world in them, and standing there are walls and windows staring at me, and leaves of letters here about to go milking, quite like the heart itself and photographs lost in themselves as if they are thinking of someone. At this moment, everything is present here except the things that are not here and I am not feeling like disturbing them. I am in no mood to write a candle or radio, nor am I willing to write table, pen and paper. I want to write 
but the poem. On this globe of ours, there is no time to go to his school, quitting crushing stones into graves. There is no intuition to think, laying the hunger down. There is no patience to speak maliciously, giving up slogans and processions. There is no need to wear a single thing, taking politics out. There is no time to leave, stopping. Selfing life alone. In this bogness, might a history of lives, lives that have been crossed themselves while crossing rocks into pieces, be written. Might an essay of times that have passed on naked through and through be written. Might a novel of fatigued evenings returning to nights. Following unsuccessful all the sort of life be written, but possibility of birth of poetry be decked with beauty since all dead. How could it be wished the poetry of a mellow age be born when this time is taking showers in the drama of loathsome taste? The mad floods of disorder flowing all over cannot be controlled by putting an earthen pot of ignorance on the head. It is not easy as it is with chewing shame and foolishness to chew the wreckage of broken time. In such a scenario, I might just end up writing again a howl in a state of an era ripe open. Poetry that is soaked in the sweetness of euphoria is not taking shape in my mind, but I want to write poetry of an age dancing in the tunes of art that is full of light. But this moment, I am bereft of poetry on this planet from where beauties of creation are vanishing away curiously. Thank you. Mm, this was my poem, and now I would like to thank all of the participants of this session. Uh, and again, the Site Academy of India and FOSWAL um, for this program and this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sumanji, for your poem. Uh, the session ends here. And we will look forward now to our next session, which is meant uh, for fiction readings. Uh, now, I heartily thank uh, all the distinguished poets who participated in this session and recited their wonderful poems. This is so creative a way to begin our day. You have finally tuned this Saturday and made it so beautiful. Thanks a lot. And as all birds come together to their nest, all we together come to thank Ajit Ma for being with us all through. Thanks a lot, Ajit Ma. And thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot. Namaskar. Thank you. Yeah, Namaskar. Thanks. Thank you.